Okay, welcome everybody. Um, there is no slides, so we'll go through the code. And if you have questions, we can um, answer that and elaborate on that. So the main focus here is integration of um, GDB, uh, a poke inside the GDB. Oopsie. Okay, and this is, where is my GDB? No, this one. Okay, so um, the idea is we have this um, GDB which has a poke sub command. How many people here are familiar with poke? A few, so yeah, of course, Jose is also. Okay, um, so you're a GDP debugger. If you approve our patch, you get one of this. I'm trying to bribe, oh, this is recording. No, it's for everybody. <laughs> and yeah, so uh, we go through the beginning and, um, and then like this, I have three versions of poke. It's especially for everybody, but you know, feel free if you like, you can have one of these. So um, it's about um, the, um, um, poking binary data, okay? You want to describe the uh, bits and the relationship between the bits. So that's the um, main application. You can write poke, you have this application. We now have this in the poke. So uh, it's, a pro it's a general, it's a not domain specific, but general purpose programming language. So you can do stuff, it's Turing complete. Um, you can have um, arrays, numbers, um, and so it works. You can have um, change the, like the output base, you know, goes from 16 to 10. Um, so, uh, but uh, like this is the idea. But in poke, we can have, um, so we can have structs to, uh, define how these bits are related to each other. So I open the GDB with uh, this um, program. So add type, so I have here a C program, right? Um, different structures, union and stuff like that. So long u int. And um, the idea is to automatically translate this uh, information to poke structs. So I can say, for example, struct, um, like Baz, yeah. So what happens is, um, um, like poke, um, like we inside GDB. So we uh, go through every uh, uh, element of this structure, field of the structure, and define the equivalent uh, type in poke. So this is um, what actually a valid poke code. So this is given to the poke compiler, but this is this source is generated from the GDP. Uh, so here you can see that we have um, uh, different size of integers from one bit to 64 bit. Yeah, I think, or you can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you please elaborate a little bit how you enable this poke support in GDB? Okay, sure. Uh, so, uh, and feel free to interrupt me. We want to like understand what's going on. So this is the uh, one single poke, okay, inside the GDB uh, source. And poke is a library and it supports um, integration to other things. Uh, um, so here, so we have, uh, maybe it was a good idea to have some slides because you know it's like complicated. So we have this array of bytes, which is like our IO space, right? And we have um, description of bits, right? And we want to map these together and interpret information, right? Inside uh, the GDB, we have a po uh, we have a command which is like, um, um, uh, you can see here, for example, this poke at uh, type here. 
um, here is the, the, the magic is happening. So we go through all the symbols and you know, all the types, and uh, if it's a pointer, we create equivalent uh, poke uh, type. And um, if it's like floating point integer, you know, if we go through that and we generate this kind, um, is it clear or? Okay, so that's the idea of how you see uh, this uh, long uh, double here. So we generate the uh, C, like the poke code from the GDB. And uh, so here we can have in poke, we can have uh, different types of integers. Like we can have one which is a 32 bit, we can make it unsigned, we can make it long unsigned, which is 64, and also we have, we can have in three, okay, three bits, or we can have 13. Um, here we have uint eight, which is unsigned integer of bits eight, and it's an array of 16. The reason is, um, here we have in the baz, if you look, we have the long double, which is, uh, wider than 64 bits, so there is no type in the poke that uh, supports that. So we uh, uh, go back, fall back to this um, generation of like holes. Uh, but for others like this uint uh, 32x like bit field, we generate um, the correct integer. So you can modify this three bits independent of everything else. Uh, also here you can see for um, uh, the next fill we have this thing, and then here is the padding between um, uh, these two things and uh, the last one. I hope. I modified it something. I think I made the introduce back. Okay, so it's not a problem. Uh, yeah, so this is the idea. But the question is, this is the description of the, uh, of the bits, okay? How do we, I think I introduced the bug, yeah. <laughs> Did yeah. you change that? Yeah, yeah, I added this. Because I, 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 when I implemented that, I used labels. Yeah. So you changed I, I that. I changed it. I and passed, you broke and then, it. Yeah, I broke it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm in last minute change, sorry for that. <laughs> what? Because it's not in the release. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> It's far from release. No, it's in the GDB, actually. If you accept our patches, <laughs> then it's part of that. Um, so I like, a few hours ago, I changed stuff, so yeah. Uh, not a good idea. But, uh, so uh, this is our description. So we get an understanding of like how the memory or fields are laid out in the uh, memory. Now the idea is we want to actually interpret them, decode them from poke. So it is, uh, there is a concept. So if you have a GDB, so here I have, for example, um, Z2, or I have, um, like poke and type struct foo. So this is a struct foo. And I want to have access to variable f1, which is with this syntax. But the problem is uh, poke doesn't understand this f1. So what we have to do is get the address of this f1, right? We have two syntax for this, one like this or this. So this first part um, is the magic that like, I will explain in a few moments how it, this works. So we uh, go to the uh, GDB and resolve this symbol as an integer offset or a string. So here, this is the address of this variable, right? So there is a concept in Poke called, um, so I have this type here. You can see, we can map it at one address. So using this, the poke reads all these bytes and interpret them based on the description of these things. So here is the like power of pokes in debugging kicks in because when you have a decoder and encoder and you want to verify that it actually works according to the specification, 
your specific is in poke, um, you can run this code, and if you get the same result, means that your uh, decoder or encoder is working correctly. So, uh, poke is useful for documentation, but the main power is is that it's ex executable documentation. So you can actually execute it for generating samples for your test cases, and also. In the GDB, you can use this for debugging situation. If like something is weird, which I'll show, you can actually look at the data and then compare that if everything works or not. And uh, so, any questions so far? Okay. Wait for the mic, yeah. Imagine you're looking a uh, an application which you don't have debug information, a yes. binary, and you, but you have knowledge of the structure. Is yeah. there any way that you actually can include the information of the structure yeah. and use it? Yeah. Thank you. So you can, like this, foo, this is like um, C syntax, uh, poke syntax. I can go in 32 bar and um, you int, uh, 32 as BAS because we don't have floating points in uh, poke. We use integers. I, I'll show um, a pickle or a module. We call po uh, poke modules pickles. So we have a for float. So I will show you. And uh, double is uint uh, 64. So if you, you don't have those information, you can go and do exactly this. Like address of F1 or the other syntax address of SPA. So this is, you get the same results. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just another thing, like, would you, for example, put a watch point in one of those entries? No. From pull? Uh, I mean, you got the information of the value. Could you now, like in GDB, set a watch point? You can calculate, for example, the offset, for example, uh, this is our variable, okay, dot pass, and you have the offset. We don't have the offset. Okay, it's a UN32, so you don't have the offset. Um, e offset. E offset, okay. No. No, yeah, of this thing, yeah. E offset. One. Yeah, so this is the first offset in, in bits. If you can see, all the, um, so we have this offset type in the poke, which is a magnitude and a unit. So you can have uh, like magnitude is one and the unit is eight, so it's a one byte. Or you can have um, like 512. This is useful for file systems, for example, or in um, small microcontrollers, when you're dealing with the flash memory, it's like always in chunks of page. So you can define your structure like that. But I think what Cooper is asking is, from POC, you can actually oh, yeah. GDP okay. calls using the dollar notation. Yeah. From GDP, how do you access so, like, to a variable in POC file? Yeah, so this was an open question I wanted to ask like GDB uh, a little bit, uh, GDB maintainers, like what is the best way? I have some ideas, we can use an IO space, you know, to interact with that to get some ideas, but I'm not sure because the poke is statically typed, so, you know, not sure. But what to do as Cooper, uh, we can have like, we have the address in bytes. So you can use the GDB and copy paste this address and then you have that watch point, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah so I have one suggestion for that. Um, yeah. if, if the poke command returns, would return a struct value, um, GDB object, then, then it would show up as a dollar sign right. five, and then you can reference it in other GDB commands, including watch points. Uh, nice. So I think that, that yeah, could thank work. You. A question here? Yes. Uh, wait, wait, please wait for the mic, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So um, structure layout, uh, does poke uh, the, uh, ha handle that through GDB? So we from have- From its current target or yeah. who knows the layout? So. Um, the layout is coming from GDB, okay? But in poke, um, 
it, this is like always like that. We have an N32 without any padding alignment, anything, and then comes the next one here, right? And, but these integers have Indianness, so we can have, like for example, we have Indian, um, yeah, Indian. Um, we have two Indian, for example, here we have the Indian little, and the other, we can set the uh, Indian uh, to Indian big, for example. You can change this uh, on the fly, regardless of what you're doing. For example, I can show, for example, um, set f1 dot, um, f1, where is f1? Dot d2 or like f2 3.14. Okay, sorry, it's as Why? GDP. Yeah, this is GDP, but yeah. Are you running a program? You're not running. I think I run the program, but TB main run. So let's see now. Yeah, yeah. Good. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so here I can go and um, see the value. You can see the value here. It's a different, okay? Now if I change the Indian to little, it should get something different, which is different. Here is C3, F5, 48, and 40. Here is the different. So you can do independent of GTP, change the stuff, yeah. Um, for the uh, floating point, for example, we have a module. Okay, poke load. So we have a module. We have, for example, float um, 32 at that offset, which is um, F1. I hope this works. Dot pass. Okay. Yeah, so this is the signature, so this is the sign, which is not, uh, uh, and this is the exception and the fragment. Uh, and I can change here, and I can um, define a poke variable, like f, and I have f here. I can change the exp to uh, b um, c zero, and um, x, yeah. And then we can see in the um, uh, F1, yeah. So in the F1, the number is now different. So you can actually poke stuff inside the memory. Um, but it's up to you. You can freely change the stuff and, you know, you can, oh, um, question here, yeah. Uh, um, just wondering why, oh no, in, in in, in your GTB session. Okay. Uh, you did poke float32 at something, and the result was of type float32, and then you assigned it to a variable just below, and suddenly the type is IEEE 754 binary 32. So why is, has it changed? I, what, what changed? So when you did poke float32 at something, yeah, here. It, prints, it looks like a, a type float32, ah, okay. and can, then I in the output of the next yeah, command. I, I show you, yeah, I was about to do that. User share poke pickle, so this is our standard pickles. You can see we have these types, you know, IEE things, and at the end we have these aliases, but it shows the original one, that's the reason. Okay. Is this a bug? I'm not sure. So it, instead of structuring this flow 32, it shows this underlying thing, which is confusing, but it's correct. <laughs> Just where I put one command, it's, is this the latest? For, for the yeah. one command, it shows that the alias, and then for the second command, it shows the resolved. Just uh, weird, but. So here is like this thing, which is this thing. Yeah, and just above it's, like four lines above. <laughs> oh, here? Lines. Yeah, here. So I Interesting. Not, Didn't not, notice that. Not, okay. a, not important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for noticing, you know. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, how you extend your, because we, do, we cannot support everything. 
but here we have, for example, uh, you can define, so here, uh, this is when you have specified integer types after this struct, this becomes an integral struct, which is different from the structs. In the structs, you have one bit, then five bits, then 10 bits, regardless of your endianness. You know, you first read this one bit or five bit and 10 bit, and then you do decoding of the endianness. But when it's an integral struct, it reads the whole int 16, and then these are different parts of that integer, um, which is very useful, and it depends, does the right thing based on the endianness. If it's little endian, it does the right thing, it's like, you know, you get always the correct sign. So this is how we extend uh, poke. Um, here we have, look, you can define methods on the structs um, to make them um, do stuff like is nan or is things. And then we also have pretty printers, um, um, which is a uh, um, show you, uh, like this is, let me show you. So here, poke uh, vm set pprint. I hope, no. Okay, let me see how was the, what was the? Uh, all people. Yeah. Good. So, and then if I have the poke F, it's now shows the pretty printed version, uh, if I make it a little bit. So here is the, our pretty printed version. We support printing floating points, but you know, in the language, we don't have um, the, the, the type for that. We have also, um, uh, str2f, I implemented that, but I don't remember. Was that or I'm getting old, so bear with me. Steady, STO, STO, okay. Okay, this is the, how you uh, change this, uh, like change this floating point. If you want debugging, you can get that. So, okay, any questions so far? So, the idea was we can describe how bits are related to each other, and then uh, inside the poke we get the address, we do mapping, we interpret everything, we decode everything, and then we show stuff, and we can change the stuff in poke, we see in the memory, and if we change the stuff in the memory, we see in the poke, and this old magic happened through the GDP. Uh, you can integrate leap poke with the same strategy to other programs if you want to extend that. Um, okay. Uh, how this um, um, uh, here, this, this magic works, let's see. So when we have um, um, in, the, in the poke lexer, when we hit this uh, um, either dollar or the uh, angle brackets, this will, whatever is inside this, will be passed to the, at the next time, uh, passed to the um, uh, user callbacks. And then there uh, we have to say what's the meaning of this thing in terms of poke. Either it can be an offset or integer or a string. So I can show you, for example, uh, here, uh, D token, D token, okay. So here you can, we call them alliant tokens. So we can, you can register different alliant tokens and then you can get to them. Um, we have um, here a simple one. So if it start with uh, address or this is the delimited one, which we remove these things and all of these two simple cases handled here. So if this is starts with an, um, uh, percent we use uh, GDB functions to get the value and then we get the address from that and then we now generate uh, the kind of 
uh, this thing, which address is like offset, and then the magnitude and uh, the unit size also reads from the unit size. So if you have a machine with bytes of 16 bit, it will do, does the right thing. So what you get is um, instead of uh, like one byte, you will get 116, for example, as the. So you extended the, so you added support for passing arbitrary GDB expressions in the limited alien tokens? Yes. So you could write, for example, dollar less than yes. Yes. two plus two, and that would be a GDB expression. Is that dollar one? No, I mean in poke. Yeah, yeah, let me like A, B, C to four. Okay, and then in poke you have dollar a b c, and you get uh, poke set o base ten. Oh no, I mean, but can you have like white spaces in there? Like yes, a, like, sure. If like if it one makes sense. like one plus two, for example, inside. Okay any arbitrary things which evaluates to either string or uh, offset or integer. Can you set a POC ver uh, GDB variable there or is it just an expression? Set who, who say? So this is the error. <laughs> So because it should evaluate uh, an integer or something, you know, that's the sad part, yeah. Like that's not an expression, so you can add that parse it out. So uh, like set, something like this? Set is a command. Set is a command, so that's not something you could pass to parse and eval. Yeah. So I that don't expect so that So that's word. the problem, yeah. But there is another choice I guess if uh, dollar foo exists in GDB, you could do poke dollar underscore foo equals one, and that should work. Yeah. Just drop the set, and you might need to do set foo outside of poke. Yeah. And then you can do poo dollar, uh, poke dollar under. Uh, yeah, um, set in foo to. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. But then we have the foo, which is uh, address of foo. No, no, sorry, dollar, dollar foo. Then you yeah. have the value. You can and change it. Also. You can actually have dollar foo equals to something if you want it to assign from inside that. No, in, inside the, the, the yeah. yeah, like this. That that works. Works. Yeah. But yeah. The problem with this is that you cannot put a poke expression in there. Mm, inside that, no, no, because you're in GDB. Have you considered, um, like, to do it like the book way? So, in book, you can have different IO spaces. So, one could be one IO space, yes, provide like a conceptually could provide like a table with variable name and delegate. My idea was for this, for line information, you know, you can have, get the light information using this IOD or this kind of things. Stuff like a poke type that you will load with a GDB pickle. Yeah. Like, it will be like a struct with an, sorry. Yeah. So like an, a table, right? Like an, an array of, so the type yeah. GDB variables would be maybe like, um, string no, or struct. An array of structs, the struct containing one string and then one like what? Uh, like a string, something like CMD or name? Something like that. Yeah. And then I Then you will need to do all the magic in the on the GDP yeah, in part in the alien token handler. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe it's too overcomplicated. Yeah. Okay. So like I can show you if you have more interest in the, uh, so it's very simple. It's like uh, 1,920 lines of code, independent in one place. And uh, so, like I was thinking of we can support more parameters and stuff like that. Okay. So these angle brackets, it's not only for GB, like it's, it, it's any arbitrary application defines an alien, like a registers an alien token handler. Yeah. yeah. So can, 
I don't know if poke uh, registers some by default internally or no. like it, can, can you register multiple ones or is just one? Just one. Okay. Inside that you can then dispatch based on what you want to do. Okay. So the uh, pickleX.l. So here you see the la um, the magic is happening. So um, if it's we have a dollar. or this other variant here, like if you have something and then less than, and then anything other than greater than, and then greater than, so it is angle brackets, then based on if the first thing is a, this thing we call this delimited token callback, or the other, and it's called uh, lexical cuckold, thanks to Jose, I have no thing. <laughs> <Not the> <laughs> yeah, one question there. I've seen that you collect information about the structures from, uh, I think it's through GDB, right? Yes. That is from Dwarf. Yeah. Is, is there any way from Poke for you to actually construct a pickle that would recover type information from other type of structures in the ELF format? We have an um, um, ELF uh, module, so you can actually traverse the ELF and do whatever you want to do. So I can probably show you load elf. Oh, thank you. So load elf. And we have, so here I need some help because I don't know where to look for the elf. So it's elf64 file at, um, how can I get the address of the beginning? So, yeah, it's not in. It's not valid. So I don't know if you have the elf. Do not restrict it. Let's see what is there. Um, we can uh, not this other way. So with this operator, you can say we don't care about the constraint. Just map the stuff. So it's like yeah. So if you have somehow somewhere this information, you can traverse that through the GDB I and the poke. If I understood, you, you can actually read from the ELF format and extract whatever information yeah. you can. Yeah. But what I mean is that can you actually feed back in GDB the information of the type such that you could use it, or in poke? But mm -hmm. you can use GDB command to do yeah. types. Why do we do that? Yeah, if you have dwarf information. If you want to have fun, yes, you can yeah. do many things. But if you want to solve the if problem, you have dwarf, solving was, the problem. Was, yeah. yeah, I was, I was thinking, I was just asking if uh, uh, Poke would be expressive enough actually to feed information into itself, extracted from some other file, so that you could use to pretty print or whatever. That's. I'm not sure how we can feed information to, maybe we can discuss with it. Actually, well, some of the reasons why we want to integrate in other applications like GDP is that we don't want to do stuff that other programs do very well, like GDP. Like we don't want a dwarf to talk that because GDP can be used to organize. It doesn't matter where GDP gets the type information from, we can have it in types. Yeah. So, that's why. yeah. so um, any question or remarks or ideas? What? Yeah. Is there a poke dash interactive uh, command like yes. Python interactive? So the main application when you run poke is this uh, CLI application. Uh, which you can have uh, the full power of, um, uh, so you can have fall user being ls, and then you can load elf, and then you can elf64 file at offset yeah. zero. You can have pretty print yes, and you know, you can get, uh, what was that? O OP print? No, no, the same. O mode to o tree mode. to be more, yeah, like a tree. So you get all the 
L file information like the headers and stuff here. Okay, I, I meant inside GDB, like for Python, you, you can have the mode where you like Python and Python element, but you also have Python dash interactive, it brings you into a Python shell. So you would not need to do poke, prefix poke all the time. Like you can try the PI command in, in right now in GDB. Right now, uh, yes, I know what you're talking about. Like so PI, no, just PI. PI. It's PEPI, it's it's a shorthand for Python dash interactive. Yeah, yeah. So the same for poke would be useful yeah. for you since you yeah. forget. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Right yeah. When you do that in GDP, um, is that a, a, um, a REPL that you have implemented in GDB? Or is this REPL provided by Python? Because, for example, autocompletion, is autocompletion here if it works in this Python? Uh, can it that autocomplete like doesn't Python? Doesn't work, yeah. No. Tap doesn't work. So because for that's some, I mean, we are integrating with UDB via libpoke that provides basically the incremental compiler no, and there is no. the main features. But everything in the, in the command line interface, like autocompletion, uh, even high level commands, like dot commands, like describe type yeah. or what types are defined with this prefix or whatever, we cannot bring them to GDB because they are on the application side. Yeah, yeah it's... I don't recall how it's done exactly. I think it's, I think it's no, I don't want the, to. The problem is if we introduce that, it's conceptually very hard for the user because they expect all the familiar uh, commands there and... I mean, I think this is nice to have. Yeah. Like, we don't have to write all the time. And for completion, like, I think in, in that, in the, in the C Python shell like this, I don't, I don't think you have completion usually, so it's not... Uh, so the technique probably like I use most of the time for dealing with poke is like this. We have um, um, like scratch.pk, I open somewhere. Um, let me find it. Scratch, 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 here, okay? And I can close it and open it here, yeah. So the idea is you can easily load the stuff like load, scratch, and you like you can play with things and add the stuff, and because it's an incremental compiler, you can redefine things. So, I mean, I don't use that thing much, you know, I if I want a new thing or experimenting with the stuff, I define um, like in 32. And then you just load it. Uh, yeah. Just to that I'm pretty sure this I'm pretty sure this load this load uh, change stuff cycle is automatic in the Emacs interface. You can also <laughs> does that. You know, you can have a buffer, then you can easily feed that. Whenever you update things, you load that as well. So this is much better than having that limited set of um, interface to the poke. Yeah. So what command would be for for poke? I mean, pi there. PK. <laughs> I mean, poke dash interactive, but I would yeah. imagine. But anyway, just an idea for. Yeah. Any other questions or vague things, problems? Uh, so, um, this is one I think are a part of the thing. I can show you other, so I can open another program here. So, or we can go through this uh, code, like um, it's not a very complicated thing. So this is the full magic is happening. Uh, I need a little bit of help here because, you know, sometimes, you know, not sure what to do. So um, it's like pointers are translated to offsets with the byte. Maybe we can use like other units here also. Um, type def is like we, um, you know, this uh, we add first the target type and then we define a new one. Floating and integer and enum are all translated to um, uint, so whatever it is. Uh -huh. One nice thing about um, integral structs is that. Um, so here we had um, poke f1. What was that? Poke. Um, let's see. F. 
of what was the float? Yeah, here. Okay. We implement auto complete from GDB as well, right? I think we have. If, we if didn't try. Can do that. If GDB can do that as well, like using. The yeah. We, we have to register the callbacks for the auto completion. I think Lipok provides a function that, that do auto complete. So, is it possible to hook in the GDB auto completion system with an additional function? We have to look at that. Yeah. Would you welcome a patch if that's not the case? I mean, for making it possible? Okay. So, here, this f is a poke variable, which is an integral struct. If we add a plus before that, or any kind of, uh, um, it transforms to the, uh, this uh, basic type, which is like this um, in 32. So, and also the other case works. So when uh, we get uh, uh, things like that, you know, like um, F1, it was a struct foo at this address. So the, uh, the baz is, um, where is the baz? Oh, here is the float, right? So I'm getting, uh, oops, see, so I'm getting an integer but I can cast it to a float 32 and it will work. So you cast integers to struct, integral structs and vice versa. So I can add it that and then make it plus one and then cast it again as, so here this is an integer and then float 32, we have a different thing. Uh, and then we can have print f um, F32, I hope, D, and it should work, yeah. So that's the, when you can do like debugging, you know, okay, this is, you turn it to that. This is very useful for flags in, I will show you in a moment, like in microcontrollers or something, a question there. Presumably the addition we saw there was relying on the IE 7.4 guarantee that you can just add integral one to a float and it, and it, and it boosts it by one, treating it as an integer. No. It's not actually doing an, a floating point addition there. No, no, it's just integer. Right. So it goes to the integer, you add integer addition, and then you cast back. Just wanted to show that this dance works like from this to that. It's very useful for flags in registers, in like microcontrollers, stuff like that. You want to have different meanings. Okay, uh, I have this in the GDB, I have this just as this, what it means, yeah. No, I want yeah, you. I, I, I guess my understanding of what you said is that that plus one was possible because the float structure is defined as struct int. Yeah, yeah exactly. If it was not struct int, it would it, tell it you would like, like you yeah, cannot, add, cannot work. Yeah. It should be integral struct, yeah. And we can integral struct from one bit to 64 bit, it all works. Um, the other topic is like, um, so I can show, but talking about these registers, which is useful. I have a, a toy here, just wanted to blink some LEDs uh, to show that like it's interesting and um, um, you can use um, GDB to verify the state of your system. For example, if you hit this breakpoint at this point in the program, this set of registers should have this value. For example, when you want to go to sleep, you want to be sure that your pins are not output because you know it's leak energy. So this kind of thing is also possible with the poke. Um, so I can, so here we have this, so this device has two LEDs. I'm not sure if you can see them, let's see. If it's visible, these green things blinking, right? Good. So, um, so we have registers, two, two, uh, two registers, like um, you know, one register, for, like we have a bunch of registers for different ports. So for this LED, it's located on uh, a specific, so I can a little bit zoom in. What happened? 
I don't know what's going on, why it doesn't work. Yeah. So here um, we have this address of this register. So this is the base address for all the registers, and then we have uh, seven, eight different ports. So we go to that port, and then we can define, okay, this pin is output or input, and then what's the value if it's output? So um, here you can see that uh, the least significant, uh, the least significant uh, um, half fork is for the direction. So if it's one, it's output pin. So for LEDs, it should be output. And um, the other um, half, which is the higher uh, half, is the what's the value of the output? You know, is pin is zero or one? So this also can be described. So for this, we have to like use um, a GDB server, which Open OCD can provide for you. So for this specific pin uh, board, uh, I'm using this config. So it, it has a jailing programmer inside that. And then I'm using this SWD, which is the ARM technology for like controlling the cores and um, a bunch of configuration about like, uh, I can show you and target. So um, chip name, the ad, like CPU ID and, you know, normal things. And if you, um, so now we have a GDB server on this port, three, three, you don't have my cursor, yeah. That's, yeah, you don't have it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then if I come here and open this ARM non-GDB with this target extended at this address, I can go there and then there is this, um, like, it will halt the, the core. So, if I, come here and close the scratch and reopen it here. So what we, what we had here in this is like two UIN 16, which is two normal UIN 16. And um, then these, I will explain in a moment what that means. This is also method. And this is the port um, conversion formula we had there. So poke, um, load, scratch. We have the scratch there. Port, I know that this is on port four. So this is the address of port four. And now I have this port control register one at this address. So these are the values of those things. And you can see that like these two bits, like seven and eight um, are defining this PDR, so the direction, pin direction, is like one, which means uh, output here in the next line. And uh, the, the other thing is the value. So what I can do is assign this to a variable P4, for example, and then I can say, okay, P4 or PDR, to get the value, I can change things, but I don't want to change the direction because it's already output. I want to toggle one of these. So this is the syntax for shifting to left. And uh, if you see, uh, so it's not very visible, let me, so three two bits, shift to the seven, and you can see that it's blink so. You're successfully <laughs> the most important part of this thing, you know. We can go, um, okay, so this is um, one approach. So the, um, we can also make it uh, personalized. Like you can have um, a new version of this thing. This is this, you're gradually developing stuff. You can use these things. So your GDB is your shell. You can play with registers and stuff like that. You gradually go there. So for example, we want to personalize this. So how many bits it was? Oh, now my brain cannot work, but it's like something like whatever, right? Um, so let, let's, let's, let's actually do something. Poke. 
VM set O base two uh, here. So one, one, two. Okay, seven zeros. So here we have u in seven, which we don't care. And then we have two, or we can have one, like LED two, and then u and one LED one. So, yeah, you don't need. And uh, now nine, seven, seven. And now we have this uh, PODR kind of personalized. Or this is one way. The other way we can use pinned struct, which is the equivalent of C union. So both of this fill pinned at one page. So you can actually have the full thing or your personal version. But let's not do it now. Did you mean to change the PDR to six? I have to now change it, you know, like, I, I, my brain is not that capable, so I have to go slowly. So here is now our PDR. And this is the uh, PDR, okay? Or we can, uh, no, let's, let's do it simple. We can introduce nested stuff, you know, we can do all of that. Uh, this is the PODR. P-O-D-R, okay? And now we load Scratch again, which has interesting problems. Oh, right. So, and common this thing, oopsie. Okay, so now if we go to that um, thing here, uh, P4, okay, we have, oh, you can see that there is this T, which is like bit. And now let's poke dot LED one to be, okay, it doesn't work. P O D R, okay, doesn't work. Or P O D R, is it, let, let me, Okay, doesn't work, great. <laughs> so, one failure in the, the good. I mean, hardware, I expected that, but yeah. So one bug found, good. But this is the idea. Um, so, any question or I can show some other stuff? Yeah. Uh, what's the computer you int? Oh, ah, nice, okay. So, in sometimes you want to have fields which are not actually part of your bits there. It's like virtual or computed based on some other things. You can say, okay, computed um, this thing as, uh, and then you have to introduce the methods like get that thing or you can have to insert set something. The most useful use case is um, like I can give a good example is this uh, instruction sets, for example. Uh, Poke pickles, we have risk five. So computed. For example, in this instruction set, you have a f um, formatting called I. Here, you can have 12 bit signed integer inside this 32 bit instruction. Okay? But you as a user, so like the risk five will first sign extended to a 32 bit and does the operation. But you as the poke user want to operate that as a, in 32 as the processor itself doing that. So you can have this computed in 32, which is um, like the actual immediate the full. So this is you, uh, like you have get IMM and set IMM and the types should be correct. That's the computed. Okay, five minutes. So, any other questions? Yes, uh, so um, question more on the actual integration between POC and okay. V. Um, 
GDB can debug at one time multiple inferiors, and each inferior will have its own memory space. Yeah. And like when Poke asks GDB, please read some memory at a given address, is that implicitly always going to be the current selected inferior, or do you have, or do we have a way to we have, have like Poke know that GDB provides multiple I/O spaces behind the scene, and we can say that we have one of sets which is tied to a given given like inferior in that case. So, yeah, wh wh when you like when you get a reference, you can keep track of that's something that exists in the memory of a given inferior, and even if yes. you change the inferior, it just always does yeah. the right thing. So the trick is so the, all the way we, the poke works with the bytes is through the I/O space. So this is the abstraction which you have access to each bit. But there are I/O devices which provides the byte level. Then we can do this shuffle. So for the GDB, uh, we have this inferior like I/O space which you can access. But here. It's only one, so that's the reason I'm like mapping at this offset. So it goes through it because I already opened this inside this GDB.pk, which is part of this patch. Okay, that's the reason. If we want to extend that, and um, we can go to the um, inferior here. So when you are opening, like calling some string from the poke, it will at the end ends up here in this callback and we can based on this you know you can give it a new handler this handler is an opaque thing which will like here you see um, like we are sending this global variable address and then from that you get this void star so based on what you're we can extend this to be like have the number of inter inferior so you can then know in the p read we have to um, come here and then does this target read uh, on that inferior so that's the way we can extend this yeah so we could have the url like gdp like maybe the number of the inferior yeah it could be inferior number and i'm also asking because i'm working on gdb with targets which has multiple address spaces yeah so on a given target, we can like a given address that might mean different thing on different address spaces. So yeah. Extreme. On that topic, um, we wanted to have also a GDP colon slash slash inferior or some particular inferior slash radius. But yeah. Then I found but the problem. If you do that, you want to ex like kind of explore the register, some sort of virtual register file, and then you offset into that because, or you just give the name of the register and that's in an in yeah, yeah, space yeah, and it's... This will provide like a structure like value of the register, name of register, value of register, name of register, value. but the problem I found is that in GDP apparently, where depending on the inferior, you could have some registers and not others. So we will need to have to hook in, we will need to find to fix, to fix that. So yeah. Right. That would be the perfect way to access registers, like having a register. But we can already have that using this poke, um, um, like R0 stuff. Yeah, but having it in the registry, you can write them. Yeah. You could actually oh. poke any poke structure on top of all the registers for getting yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And really quick, uh, the other question is, I think I remember the initially when you sent the patch, we had some issues with the garbage collector conflicting with the one from the yeah, It's a work in progress, yeah. It's we we changed uh, to a precise garbage collector, uh, which uh, you have to have a bunch of description for the types, so we are getting rid of this boom GC, yeah. But yeah. Means, okay. Yeah, we just make sure that like the configuration stuff need to be sure that that's mutually yeah, go ahead. Yeah, they, they, they cannot be enabled at the same time. Yeah, yeah. we have nice. a poke box tomorrow. Uh, the afternoon. Yeah, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to attend because there are all the stuff I need. Uh, to okay. Okay. Uh, I'll take. I'll take. Well, thank you everybody, and have fun. Yeah.